Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. Today we are going to look at Paolo Serpieri. Um, this video does have nudity, so I'm going to warn people up front that you will see butts and boobs and probably naked dudes, but not f I, I tried to avoid frontal nudity overall. So Serpieri definitely um, is more of an adult artist, so if you're not familiar with his work, just be forewarned, and especially if you search for him and you are sensitive to that stuff, you might want to watch it. So anyway, I'm going to actually not monetize this video, and then worst case scenario, if it does eventually get flagged, I'll probably come up with a, a secondary YouTube channel for videos like this, because, I mean, he's an artist, he's doing art, um... Some of these pieces were sold at Christie's auctions and Heritage auctions. He's a legit art artist. It's not um, something that we need to hide from, but uh, you know what I mean? You never know. So anyway, but uh, let's do some quick housekeeping and updates really fast as a helicopter flies over, of course. Give me one moment, friends. Can you hear it? This is uh, how many of my videos start. Especially on the weekends. Um, all right, so uh, today I will have the pre-launch page for Blaster Kid up. I started working on it last night. It was really annoying trying to do it on an iPad. So today on my computer, I will finish the process. And uh, yeah, I will let everyone know. I may even do a short video later this afternoon letting people know that it's live. Please sign up. I really, really need your support more than ever as we move into this. It's very, very exciting. I'm going to be reaching out to many people that have offered their assistance on this. And everyone is welcome. Everyone. I've said in other, other videos of mine, I know way too many people to start to, um, you know, segregate friends and fans that have different beliefs than mine everyone is welcome so all right let's get into serpieri this is going to be fun i don't know a ton about the actual mediums that he uses so this is going to be interesting to me in fact i don't think that i even own a serpieri book uh and it was it was fun pulling up images i kind of know him more for the cheesecake stuff but um you know i'm i'm obviously aware that he's done the book druna but this is actually really cool and almost has a like a meta baron's um sort of feel to me um i don't know if it's tied into the meta baron i don't think that it is this is very very cool um and uh, you know it's difficult for me to tell what medium he uses we have i actually have scans of his uh, inks and also some pencil drawings in here so it should be pretty fun but i do believe that this is inked and then he colors over it and and i almost got the impression that possibly at least at some point in his career that he was coloring on a sort of printout of his um drawing so it may i don't know if he always did that but it looked to me like possibly there were two originals one being the black and white line art and then one being the color which i got off of heritage so uh yeah let's get rolling on this i don't have a ton of images like i said a lot of his stuff is is quite adult so um I picked what I could, but uh, there will be bare butts and boobs, both male and female. But this is very, very cool. And it's funny because when I look at this, I actually, it doesn't look like ink to me, but I'm nearly sure that it is. Uh, and, you know, there's always someone that will know what tool he uses, possibly. There are photos of him drawing, but I don't know if he was actually working on a piece or possibly just doing an autograph signing. But this is really, really cool. He's a terrific artist. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, I mean, you know, obviously Frank Cho is highly influenced by him. And, uh, oh, Ricardo Federici is also. And, in fact, I actually have two Ricardo Federici pieces sort of intermixed in here. As I was looking for um, Serpieri art, um, a couple of his pieces came up. And I thought it was interesting um, to see how the influence sort of spilled over on it. But... Yeah, he has a very distinct way that he draws girls' faces and their hair and stuff like that. I mean, you could really recognize the Serpieri piece just by the way that he renders a face. And and she's a very, very identifiable character. Okay, so let's get going into this. We'll go into full screen mode, too. I got real good scans. I, I grabbed these off of Yandex and Google. Um, and I looked for the biggest and best stuff that I could find. But you can see this is a scan off the original art. This isn't from a book. Uh, and this is hand colored. So again, I think this is probably printed out uh, and then colored um, very, very lightly onto uh, a new board. That's really cool. 
The nice thing when you work that way, it's almost like the color guides that they use, they would use in the early image days where they would print out the line art for say someone like a Joe Chido and Joe would go in and hand color this stuff and then they would give it to a digital colorist and they would use that like something like this as a color guide and you know, depending on the colorist that was interpreting it, they may, you know, keep a lot of this nuance or just use it as an overall, um, you know, lighting cue, uh, the, the hues of color and stuff like that. It's pretty interesting. This is a nice piece. These guys are fearless. These Italian and Euro, just all the European artists, they're such good draftsmen and they all, all the ones that we know just draw so well and the stuff is so detailed. This is really cool. There's a few scans that aren't as big as the others, but I, I tried to, to, unless it was something that was so awesome that I wanted to show it to you all, um, I tried to grab the biggest ones I could find. This is really, really cool. At Comic-Con, I always have an opportunity to buy his books. There's a few um, dealers that sell them. Tony Raiola and Stuart Ng um, both uh, sell a lot of... Uh, this type of you know different graphic novels and art books and stuff like that it's really good he does great hair it was funny because i mentioned michael lopez in um the last video and mike was kind of in a way he didn't draw like serpieri but he really would draw like very very pretty girls and the attention to detail was always nuts nice hands too really really good Oh, yeah, this piece was awesome. I wish that I could have found a bigger scan of this. It was on a site that was, like, blocked or just had some weird sort of, like, you had to accept way too much stuff to get into it. This is a really, really killer piece. I love the way that her back, like, the wrinkles in her back are, like, forming and stuff like that. And this is all really nice. The color is great, too. Nice, just warm tones with all the rendering and stuff like that. It's very, very cool. He did this in 89. It's interesting too. It'd be kind of fun to do a Soriyama video. This has got a little bit of like that that Neg Nagel Soriyama Serpieri. They were all doing like pretty girl drawings. This is cool. Looks like a pretty interesting story. Like I said, I'm getting heavy, heavy Meta Baron vibes, the techno priests and all that. Oh, it's interesting. So he, he look, I really like his word balloons. Man, that is really, really cool, actually. Look at this. I'm swiping that for Blaster Kid. I'm going to tell you right now, this is awesome. I'm digging this big time. Wow, that's really, really cool. And then, so, and then the letterer would go in and actually letter it this way. Not bad. I love his tails on these. You wouldn't want to get too crazy with it, but look at this, like, little double tail right here. I, I often don't really notice this, but this is excellent. This is really, really cool, too. Man. See? You learn something new every day. That is really, really cool. It was this one that caught my eye. It, oh, like the creature gets the creepy tail. Do you see that? Like when he's speaking, it's like all... It's like a double voice. Very, very cool. All right, that was worth the video right there. Let's uh, try to brighten this up a little bit, actually. Uh, let me shut this. Control U. Let's pull the saturation down just the tiniest bit. Brighten this up a little. I'm going to hit this yellow page with the white. Yeah, it's a little better. Boom. Your buddy Rich has got you back. Yeah, so this is a scan off of the original, too. And this is really interesting because, it, to to me, it's like there's no line art. He did all the lines with the freaking color. Look at this. It's all just, like, diluted either colored ink or, I don't even know, gouache, watercolor. People will know, like I said. All I know is that it looks good. And this is great, man. He really controlled this great. Like, on this sleeve, it's getting darker, but it doesn't get... It never really gets fully opaque, meaning that you can't see through it. It's always translucent. This is almost opaque. It's like teetering into it, but he was he was judicious enough with it that he didn't go all the way. But yeah, there's nothing. Everything is translucent here. It's really, really wild. It gets close. 
But let's see what the value range is. Hold on, let's get out of full screen really quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the brush, test this. Where are we at? So it's desaturated. Yeah, he's keeping it in the low saturation. It's interesting. All right, that was cool. All right, back in full screen mode. And close this. See, I picked some pretty decent files, right? Like, not too offensive. There's a few that, that if you're super sensitive to nudity, never look at yourself in the mirror then either. <laughs> They're like, that's crazy. What? Really, really cool. Man, it's just nuts. This guy's too good. Look at these pants. This is great, great folds. It really captures the thickness of the material, like that it doesn't bend like regular clothes. You see how thick these folds are? That's a heavy, thick, thick hide type material. Nice, thick, chunky boots. Yep, yep, yep. Someday, I want to do a Western. I didn't like Westerns when I first got into comics. As I've gotten older, there's something appealing about Westerns that, that uh, I've talked about it a little bit. I won't go into it in too much depth on this video because we're going to be heading all different directions. But yeah, so this is Ricardo Federici. This is one of two pieces I brought in. But you can see a little bit of the squiggly sort of serpiary-ish uh, line. Not saying that uh, it's necessarily where he gets it from, but fun piece. It's kind of ballpoint pen looking or, or something along the lines of that. Very, very cool. And people, a lot of people didn't realize that I had done a Ricardo Federici um, video already because I had a lot of people requesting it. And it was literally like three or four days after I'd uploaded it. So definitely search my channel if you have a wish list because you might be surprised. I've done enough videos now that there very, very possibly could be a video of the artist that you want to see already up. So this is really cool. Her face is great. Man, that is so awesome. Oh, it's excellent. This is really cool, too. She's sad. <laughs> no, no monsters. Nightmares. I'm so tired. I don't want to. Don't you? Man, that is really cool. I like how this is kind of protruding forward. Like, it's like like the attack. Like, it's like it was slapped together and it couldn't didn't really fit. But it like they got it on good enough. So this is the Forgotten Planet. I'm gonna definitely have to check this stuff out. You know, I have a bunch of old heavy metal magazines. I'm sure that he's in that. This is nice too. What's interesting about his work too is like clearly, at least at some points, he's probably using some sort of photo reference, or maybe all the time, who knows, or, or a, a portion of the time. It doesn't feel overly photo referenced. There's there's a fantasy element to it, and you really do get the impression that he can draw so well that it doesn't take away the fun of looking at it, where you just feel like you're looking at someone that maybe like light boxed a photo and then kind of try to bury it in the mix. So this is really nice right here. This is a very, very difficult thing to draw. And it's got a nice sense of depth to it too in terms of like you know it's a side view but you've got both of the arms coming back and uh it's really good she's got a little like kind of fat on the belly uh, it's really good it makes her shapely this is cool this is cool man this is rendered so much look at this his forehead is crazy and this too this can get away from you for sure I don't, I don't know, man. That is a lot of rendering. And it's really interesting. Like, do you see the direction of his lines? And and even the organic quality of them, like right in here. Look at how the, they, they sort of curve and then wrap over the form. Curve, wrap over the form. Curve and wrap over the form. And even right here, do you see these are going up over this lump of skin? And this is showing a plane right here. Do you see these right here? He's, show, he's suggesting another form right here. It's another like, ridge in the the meat of the eye socket. It's really, really good. And this is pulling over that form. Do you see those? And this is showing you the shape of the nose. So you can do stylish lines, but you still need to make sure that you're indicating form. There's a lot of good takeaways from this piece. This is nice too. Even the rendering on her wrist right here. Look at this. Really, really cool. This is nice. Really, really good. For hand colored, it's pretty crazy how nice this is as a flesh tone. 
That's really, really cool. Okay. No, I don't want to save those things. Oh yeah, so this was off of Heritage. I got this. There wasn't many pieces. I was, I when, when I realized that I could search Heritage for his work, I was hoping there would be quite a bit, um, but there wasn't very many, sadly. But so. I would maybe speculate that at times, maybe later in his career, or or, or uh, when it was more easy to do, that he would maybe uh, scan this, or they would shoot it, and then he would color on a different board. Because you'll see later, I've got two versions of a page. But man, this is drawn so well. Look at the clothes. This is great right here, this little area. Let me... Uh, I'm going to get out full screen mode just for a second so I can grab a better color in case I know sometimes you can't see where my mouse is depending on what you're watching the video on so this oh wait sorry this fold right here is really good these are all awesome right up here but I'm feeling this one this was a nice touch right there this right here is really good I like that a lot I could live in that fold and this guy's face is excellent. Man, that is such a nicely drawn face. Great hand. It's got a nice gesture to it. It looks natural. All went. This is great, too. His hair. It's so, like, it looks so organic. And it's, like, but I don't... There's, there's very... Really, there's none that I look through here and go, oh, he kind of lost it here. Or, like, this area gets muddy. And it's not tight and clean and crisp. And yet, everything is effectively placed. You know? There's no part where you go, oh, he kind of, like, it got real messy here. This is expertly done. It really is. It's not easy to do, especially with that organic of a line as he did. This is beautiful, too. And this is a really nice touch, too. He nailed this. All the top hair, do you see how it sits here? And then all the stuff underneath? That's really, really good, too. Very, very subtle. This is great. This almost has a little bit of a Frazetta pen and ink feel, too. Which, again, is probably just incidental. But uh, still very, very cool. This is nice. It's interesting. Do you see how on the lower eyelid he puts like the little shadows there? It's kind of nice. Makes the eyes pop. It's the sexy eyes. Michael Turner, Sylvester kind of does do that in their own way. This was an interesting piece. This was off of Heritage too. This is really cool. I like seeing this. I yeah, it's weird. Like I don't know if I would want to lay out my page this way though with the panels like that. I like that he put the word balloons in, but I don't know if I would want my art with all these blank, like the original art. I'd almost rather draw through and then just have um, the word balloons on top. Could still rip off that idea, though. <laughs> or borrow. Incorporate it. Let's look at these fishes. Fishies. That, this fish is, he looks pretty vicious. It's a vicious that looks vicious. I was watching an interview last night with Paul Reed Smith and Alex Lifeson from Rush. And Paul was talking about that he's really into fishing. This will be a fast story. But he said he caught like a huge barracuda one time. And for like four hours, the barracuda was on the deck. And then it leapt at him and tried to tried to bite him. <laughs> I caught a barracuda when I was a kid. It was I went on like a half day boat. And I was I caught the biggest fish of the day just by luck not skill i assure you but uh yeah it was a big nasty looking barracuda but they they helped me bring it in i don't even know can you eat barracuda i have no idea i've, I've never had it barracuda dun, 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 all right so we got booties it's funny because i think I probably saw Monera's stuff before Serpieri, but I probably saw them around the same time. And again, probably in Heavy Metal Magazine. But uh, it, for some reason, I acquired more Monera quicker. I'm not sure why. This is a really nice face. Love exciting and new. So I wonder very difficult. I, see, this could be a printout. 
I'm just dying to know if he's calling over the original boards or if he prints this stuff out. If anyone knows, let me know. Is the pencil? It just doesn't look like pencil anymore, and it originally is, which would lead me to believe that it is a printout, like a color guide kind of thing. This has got Frazetta vibes to me, which is again probably just coincidental. But Frazetta would do some pretty racy stuff in his sketchbooks and stuff. <laughs> oh, Frankie. This is really interesting. Look at his hand. He tried it two different ways. Do you see this? Or someone else's hand. It doesn't really look like a male's arm to me. This looks a little more feminine, but it could be just that the sketch never really got went further. It's interesting. This is a very Bridgman foot. And even, like, yeah, this is a really solid, like, lower body on this dude. Always round butts on the ladies. On the ladies, the ladies, the ladies, the nice arm too. Really good. All right, no, do not save those. This is a great pose, man. That is awesome. Bam, guys, getting shot up. This is a nice panel. This top panel is really, really good. It's an interesting layout. I like it though. It's it's interesting that he's got this guy getting shot so far up in the panel like this. But it works in an interesting way. It's why there's there's really no rules to this stuff. You can do different things. It's because it's like this stops the action for me. Like I really watch this guy getting hit, and he even kind of blocks it off so that you're really forced to sort of soak this in at first, and then you move much quicker here. But then he sweeps you back down around like this. But this is definitely very very intentional. I mean, this might as well be a panel border in some ways. But yeah, this guy's getting capped. But he really wants you to feel the um either uh. Either, either the the recoil of the gun or he's getting shot. I think it's just recoil. He might not be getting shot. It looks like there's two guys shooting, but yeah, he really wanted you to stop here. And then you move through this quicker. And then, you know, we come here and it really takes you there fast. And then we just sweep right around. Excellently done. And what do we do? He sweeps us up. This is textbook awesomeness with a little bit of his own twist right here. I see this. And I point it out to you because I like you all. Because <laughs> you're all going to go to my pre-launch page and sign up later today, right? Right. I didn't want to lag on it because I know some people will be like, yeah, I'm going to do it in three months. Well, that's me saying that I'm not lagging on it. I could have, I should have had this thing up a year ago. But uh, like I said, I was not confident that I had a big enough following. And then also I wasn't, um, I was intimidated by the, um, the fulfillment pro process. Really scared me just trying to, to orchestrate it all it seemed very insane so here's the page uncolored but this was in an auction is two pieces so nearly sure that he colors this on a different board but his inks are very watery you know this is very diluted it's fascinating It really, really does have a beautiful kind of Frazetta vibe to it, which again, could just be coincidence of, of nice drawings mixed with diluted ink. But uh, who knows? Maybe he liked Frank's work. I wouldn't see why not. Everyone likes Frank's work. This is such a great pose. I really like this arm too, in fact. That's really good. I like the form here. And then this, this good, good stuff. This is such a great shot. All right. Yep. Yeah, this is a very, very cool cover. Well, hopefully this is fun for people. I've had Serpieri requests multiple times, but most people are aware of what the challenge is of doing a video of his and, and said, you know, that it would be tough. But like I said, if for some reason this video gets, like, flagged or something, I'll just kick it to another YouTube channel. I've got, like, three or four. Not that I upload stuff to, but, you know what I mean, just you have other Gmail accounts. So it's like I could totally just throw it on a, one of my sort of just, I, you know, accounts that has really nothing on it. It doesn't matter to me. If, you know, if it's an issue. Really, really beautiful jacket. Again, it's got such thick fabric. You can really, really feel 
how how heavy this is. This is the folds are just so beefy. You know, thick fabric isn't gonna have tons of small tight folds like a dress shirt would, you know, like a like a business shirt. This is really good. Love her hip right here, it's excellent. And, you know, it is funny because Serpieri and Frank both do have sort of like the butt thing going on with the girls. Like, they like to draw butts. So, um, wouldn't surprise me if they... I think Frank would like this guy's stuff. <laughs> I you know, I would think that Frank would have seen it. They said it was... Uh, there was a... It was an interview, I think, with um, someone. It might have been Doc Dave. I think it was someone else. And they were saying that that uh, when they would visit Frank, they would bring art books, and Frank always loved to see what they would bring. Um, and uh, you know, he definitely had artists that he liked, and he always was like into it. So I could see like in the the seventies or eighties that that uh, if they were popping into Frank, they might go like, "Hey, check out this guy's stuff. What do you think?" So it's Western. So I mean, Frank did a lot of this kind of stuff early on, and even throughout his career. And also different ethnicities, like in the work, which is very, very cool. Frank always sort of mixed it up. This is really nice up here. Really, really cool effect. She's a very handsome young lady. And she's smoking. She's quite edgy. Fringe. She must be into Bon Jovi. And then we got the booty. The booty. So this is 87. This is cool. Oh, it's a little too big. Yeah, this looks like an interesting story. Look at this little thing. It's like a like a looks like a cockroach or a beetle. It's a beetle ship. I like it. Okay. And this stuff is a little more cartoony sometimes. This is Ricardo Federici. When I like I said when I was searching for Serpieri, they showed it, but I thought it was interesting to see his pencils. Again, you see just tons and tons of rendering on the anatomy. That is so wild. Oh, we actually looked at this page, I think, when um, when we did the Feder Federici video. I remember these stairs a little bit, or that he had done something similar. It's great. This is really cool, too. So much work goes into those pieces. Oh, this is great. Really, really nice. I remember when I, it's funny because this piece actually has a little bit of that vibe. Sometimes his rendering would get a little hairy for me where it would look like people were dirty or, or you know what I mean? Like this almost looks like she could have like a, you know, a seven day stubble thing going on on her, her legs. So sometimes his techniques didn't completely click with me, but I get it. It's his thing. It's so identifiable with him. You see this. And you know who it is, but this looks funny. It does look—it does look like she has super hairy legs. <laughs> look at the fabric here. This is great. He did his homework, for sure. Okay. This is cool. This is not a great scan. I just thought it was a cool-looking page. Gave me a little bit of a Blaster Kid sort of vibe. When I saw it, I was like, "Yeah, yeah." Yeah, I like it. I like it. I see what I see that we have similar interests. Serpiera. This is a nice big scan. Cool cover. Classic. This is an unusual cartoony hand for him. He usually will draw the hands out a little bit more. But yeah, some of the interiors, I had just said, actually, that some of the interiors actually did feel a little more cartoony. So he probably was working a bit quicker on this. I'm not saying that, like, this piece exactly, but that, that he probably had some sort of legit deadline while working on this. Had to get, get stuff in at a, at a timely pace. So this is interesting, too. So I'm assuming, I don't remember what year the Predator movie came out, but, I mean, this looks Predator-ish. It would be interesting to know which came first. This book... Or Predator. What do you think? Does anyone know? I don't. Oh, this was cool too. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I think maybe this is Juno when she was like a kid. I could be wrong. I'm just guessing, but it's really cool. It's nice. Wow, this is very, very cool. I love this. This is great. This reminds me of all my favorite video games. 
There's always a scene where you gotta run up here. Usually it's darker over here, though. You never get out that easy, right? <laughs> this is cool. So I think we did good. I think that we did good. Oh, yeah, this is cool, too. When I saw the small thumbnail, I was like, ooh, this is kind of MC Escher-ish. And again, if you like stuff like this, you're going to really, really dig the opening scene in Blaster Kid. I will tell you that because uh, I've never seen this before, but you'll get your yayas off. Um, I'm going to flex my perspective muscles for y'alls. <laughs> Man, that is really, really cool. Fun, fun piece. Oh my god, we're going to have so much fun over the next couple of months. It's going to be the greatest thing ever. Ever. This was the first piece that I saved. I don't know if it'll um, be the last piece that we look at, but this was the first image that I saved. I thought it was really, really nice. Very cool piece. It just doesn't look overworked, and yet it's very, very detailed. But there's just a very natural fun playful quality to it kind of like you would see like mobius do where it just doesn't nothing looks labored really you know nothing looks overworked and i was talking about the translucency of his application of color on that one piece um different style this has line work but uh, same idea though he never really goes in and mucks it up it's always got breathing room this it's funny in some ways at times it almost looks like crayola the way that it sits on the paper a little bit. It's interesting. It would obscure the lines, though, if it was crayon. You'd have to put... Well, I mean, I don't think it would even work. And this is another one. See, this reminds me of Monero when I see this. It's like reminds me of one of the first Monero stories I saw. This is about as hardcore as I think the images were that I saved. So if you can make it through this, you'll survive the rest of the video comfortably. There's no wangs. <laughs> Or, or uh, frontal nudity on on the ladies. So, I tried to I tried to make it as fan friendly as possible. This is really cool. I like the dimpling right here. And again, he really he's really good with the hair. This is a nice panel. Really good. This is a great shot too. I always found these hard to draw, especially early on. I don't know how much easier it'll be now, but when you have a figure kind of covering up so much stuff. Can, it can look truncated, meaning that it just doesn't look like everything is there underneath. So it was an interesting piece. It's weird. It reminds me very much of like Heavy Metal Magazine or stuff that you would see like in those where it's like some weird S&M story or something. It's like this chick is crazy. It's funny because here it looks like she's wearing pants, but here you do see that it's like some sort of fetish dress or something. But man, it's tough looking broad. That looks very Travis-y. It's funny. Like how Travis, how he draws faces a little bit more now. They have more of a sharper nose. And someone asked, and trust me, I've thought about it. The, t the two, if I could get Travis and David Finch to do Blaster Kid covers as tier, tier goals, I would love to do it. I'm going to reach out to Travis in the next couple of weeks and just see if he would have any interest. But don't. Don't bug him. Don't put any pressure on him. I'm just going to ask as a friend and, and explain to him. I'm going to say, hey, look, you're my hero. This book is, is a love letter to you and everything awesome that you did. I would love for you to be a part of this. You know? And hopefully he'll go for it. This is a great piece, too. Yeah, wow. It's, yeah, he gets he does some really interesting types. That's a very, very large backside on her, but it looks great really like this lighting here is very very cool but yeah could you imagine having a travis cover for it and then a david finch cover i mean at that point it's all win i don't know i mean like i said i'll be asking people what they think in terms of tiers and options and i don't want to get too variant cover crazy but um since david finch had expressed interest in it i mean i definitely would love to take him up on him if, if i can afford it and the the this is great and then travis the same deal it's like you know what i mean we just have to see how well it does but I would pursue it. This is such a really, really... It's such a nice drawing. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what it is. Is this a mirror? I, I'm thinking this is a mirror. And we're seeing... Like, this is her. And this is her reflection in the mirror. And then this guy is sort of like the peeper. <laughs> I don't know. Is your name Tom? Because you're peeping. This is great. Man, such gentle lines. 
And this looks like it's all graphite. That's really, really well done. Okay. Is this it? How many more do we have? Let me see. I want to get out of full screen mode for a second. Oh, we got a few. All right. Full, full. I had to double check what these were when I first saved the image because I was like, oh, wait a minute. What are we going to have here? But it's okay. They're just like sort of creepy tentacles. <laughs> these are cool. They're kind of like Dementors. Look at that. That's really cool. I love this too. It almost looks like ocean water, like waves. That's really, really neat. Well, this is good stuff, man. I'm really glad that we looked at this. This is the most Serpy area I've ever actually checked out. This is great, too. Yep. This dude is on the same... He's on the same wavelength as me in a lot of ways. I'm telling you. This is interesting. Muy, muy interesante. <laughs> that is really, really creepy. It looks like a caterpillar a husk or whatever or a butterfly like when they they have that weird sort of shell thing on them this guy is super creepy there's another artist that i wouldn't mind doing i can't think of his name i brought him up before he's really good did i do a video of his he's a heavy metal cover artist that did stuff that looked like this like super meat and metal um, European graphic novel style art. I can't think of his name. This was cool too. That's hard to do, man. To shade a figure like this with all these lines and not have it look completely nuts. This could go so wrong. So, so wrong. But it all looks good. He did a real nice job with it. But yeah, you start throwing lines the wrong way or something gets too dark and it's over. Yep, this guy's got a really, really great eye for detail. Really great. Very balanced. Okay, so we saw this page already. I think it was cropped. It might have been cropped like right here. We didn't. I don't remember this panel before. This is nice. Oh, yeah, I remember this. This is not a great scan, unfortunately, but it's really cool. Again, that very, very thick fabric. He really, really makes this stuff look like it's just, you know, super, super dense. Well, that was really fun. I think this is it. This might be it. So this is Serpia Juna Mor Morbus Gravis Delta. Really nice scan on the cover, too. They capture that. Um, again, it's the translucency of it. The only place that almost gets opaque is right here, but it's, it seems to work. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't stand out too much as being like jet black. It's damn close, though. He's getting there, but you can see there's a little tiny bit of breathing room through that. A little bit of translucency on the black. Very, very important. Because if, if this was jet black, like uh, if I do this, just as a for instance, you'll see what I mean. You know, if that just got away from him just that much, do you see how much that grabs your attention more? It's compositionally in a decent spot where it's still, he gives you a lot of options to look around, meaning that, um, you know what I mean, you still, you have these fun shapes that are sending you all these different directions. So this being such a, a, a box shape, generally speaking, will sort of catch your eye. It's like I've, I've used two examples, that a square and a circle really kind of make you stop and, and look at it. And the advantage he has here is that he's turned the box into do a, like a two point perspective. So you're at least having two directions to sort of send your eye, which is he wants you to look here and he wants you to look here, but this moves you through this. Do you see this? And this connects her to that and this, and this is coming towards her. So it's nice and this helps um, frame her. Good stuff. No, I don't want the update, thank you. 
Thank you, malware bites. Okay, so I think this is gonna be it. We'll see. Hey, no, don't want that, asshole. All right, have a great day. Please smash the like, uh, and uh, yeah, stay tuned for the Blaster Kid pre-launch party. I'm ordering all kinds of fun stuff to make the videos super, super exciting and entertaining. It is gonna be really, really fun. I, I was thinking about it last night, and I'm like, this is like the funnest thing that I've done in so many years. I said this too in another video that I don't remember if it was the Patreon question and answer that I did, but uh, the idea of self-publishing this makes it even more fun. If a publisher came to me right now and said, hey, we would love to publish Blaster Kid, would you rather just do that? I wouldn't. I want to do it with you all. I really do. That makes it extra special and extra fun. It really does. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Enjoy the video, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow, or maybe, like I said, later today, just with a quick announcement. I can show the page and talk about it and uh, let you know my experience setting it up. All right, stay tuned. Bye.